Hi, Tiny Home Fam. Day 13 out of 30 days since we've got the notice to vacate the land in Sebastopol with our tiny home. I'm Lindsay with Experience Tiny Homes and I am, I am good today. I am here at the city of Santa Rosa where I just left the planning department and ah, there's potential here. This is, this is potential for the fast affordable housing micro development that I'm talking about and have been talking about and been dreaming about and it's been quite an ebb and flow of emotion um, about getting the news but through the process I think it was like day eight day seven I was like everything happens for a reason um, another day I was running through some anger about what was happening and today possibility breakthrough so we found out that there is a temporary use permit let me get the actual language temporary housing unit option here in Santa Rosa because of all the fires that happened. And what that means is you can actually put a, um, what is it, a manufactured home, a fa factory built home, and an RV, okay? So we're focusing on the RV. So tiny homes, just for those of you that aren't aware, are actually RVs. There is no tiny home, um, naming system within the DMV. You actually have a license plate on the back of your tiny home. So it is an RV, is an RV, is an RV. And super important when you're sitting there at the desk to just call it an RV because it's gonna make things a lot easier. So with all that has happened with the fires, um, the RVs in backyards have given people the option to live somewhere while they rebuild, uh, to have temporary housing, you name it. So that actually got passed. There was a three year, this gets, inter this gets interesting, three, actually two and a half, two, two years ago, a little less than two years ago, April 2018, it was passed that for three years, you can apply for a permit that would allow you to be on there for five years. That's right, five years. So let's say we figure this out, we find a home and we, we put the tiny home, it'll fit in the backyard and we apply for a permit, that means that home from can be on that property from now till five years from now. And if it's an RV with some self-containment, actually tanks that hold the black water, all the gray water, everything, and you have a pumping contract, you actually do not need to run the water, sewer, and electrical lines. Maybe the electrical and sewer, I just know the sewer part. Um, However, most tiny homes are there to stay for a while and five years, that's a lot of pumping. So it's probably wise to run the water, sewer, and electrical. Um, buying a solar system instead of running that kind of thing is also pricey. It just so happens to be that our tiny home has solar on it. We've already bitten the big bite and paid $17,000 for our solar system. So these are all things that you consider. What's also coming to happen with uh, City of Santa Rosa is they're looking at passing or amending the Junior Accessory Dwelling Unit Ordinance, also called JDU. And what that means right now, what's currently available is if you have like a master bedroom or somewhere within your home, then you can expand and create a JDU. Or what they're about to, about to pass or include in the new ordinance is the gross floor area of a home which will also include the garage that's a big one you know a lot of people if they're really attached to having a garage or putting their car in it then this is not for them but ultimately if people are like I can park my car on the street or in the driveway right before the garage and actually have someone live in the garage or no longer the garage the JDU then great so the plan would be the single-family home with the JDU and the temporary use permit for the RV or AKA tiny home in the backyard, now you have three autonomous living spaces with bathrooms, with kitchens, with the possibility for your 18 year old kid to be in the backyard or grandma to be in the JDU or a renter, um, all those things come into play. With the JDU, I will say though, the person that owns the home has to live in either the JDU or the home. So that is something to consider um, as we go forward. However, if we do that, when we do this opportunity and create these opportunities, it could turn into a flip or someone that wants that scenario of having a renter in the backyard and we set everything up for them. So this is the possibility of fast, affordable housing that's available now. 
And as of March 3rd, we're gonna find out if that can be homes that can be converting with their garage. I mean, what coincidence that they're literally gonna be working on that two days after I come back from Tiny Living Festival in California, San Diego. So, a lot happening, a lot of different energy than focusing on the land, which is beautiful and gorgeous, but a whole lot of work. Three homes that need fixing up, as well as an upgrade to septic. I personally would rather put my energy and time into putting tiny homes and backyards all over Santa Rosa until May 2021, where hopefully they're gonna extend that or make it legit and make it permanent, like in the city of Fresno, San Luis Obispo in LA, where tiny homes are allowed as accessory dwelling units and backyards permanently. So let's see that be the case. If you're interested in advocating or being involved on that March 3rd meeting, please comment below if you are interested in checking out tiny homes and, and living in one in a backyard. Uh, message me, comment, uh, say I'm interested. Or if you're interested in being an investor, love it all. Okay, you guys, so experiencetinyhomes.org as well as at Experience Tiny Homes, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. I'll be seeing you on day 14. Bye.